Welcome back to Cold Front Kitchen. Been a minute since I put the video together for you guys. So, hunt season happened. Pretty tough all year, but it is what it is. So today I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare duck breast or puddle duck breast. Stuff that you can keep the skin on. So this is a pan seared skin on duck breast with garlic, parmesan, mashed potatoes. So like I said, if you've got birds that you kill that are of the quality that you can pluck and keep the skin on, I recommend doing it this way. This to me is a uh, duck in its purest form, just skin on with the meat, seared in a pan with olive oil, salt and pepper, and butter baste it if you want to do it that way. Um, I know a lot of people, their idea of cooking duck is always pop the breasts out, skin off, which is fine. Uh, plucking the bird is a lot more work, but cutting it into little tiny strips, soaking it in Italian dressing, stuffing it into a jalapeno with cream cheese, wrapping it in bacon, putting it on the grill, which, okay, I get it, but one, super labor intensive, a lot of steps, and two, you can't taste the duck. To me, jalapeno poppers, or duck poppers, are for people who really don't like to taste the duck, or don't know how to cook it, so I'm gonna show you how to unf*** yourself. So, what you're going to need for this recipe is, like I said, skin on duck breast. I'm using a half of a mallard breast. You're going to need salt, pepper, extra virgin olive oil, unsalted butter, preferably something decent quality, not country crock. Potatoes, I'm using um, Yukon Golds, garlic cloves, and... Parmesan Reggiano, half and half. That's it. So one more little soapbox moment for you. Believe it or not, birds that you shoot on the water taste exactly the same as they do when they're flying. So this is a water swat bird, okay? I shot this bird on the water, sitting still like it was a turkey, and it's gonna taste just as good as if I had shot it back flapping in the decoys. So. Keep that in mind. Okay, so we've got our potatoes here. Uh, I've got enough for about two meals for me. So I think a good rule of thumb when you're making mashed potatoes is think of it like if I were baking these potatoes, how many would I want? And then that's how many potatoes you use. So I'm using, you know, two medium, one small size Yukon Golds. All I really want to do here kind of get these to where they're you know yay big cut them into quarters say if they're that size if they are this size potato I'm probably gonna cut it into like eighths just so they're all relatively uniform and that's just gonna allow potato cook a little more quickly because we ain't got time for that whole potato bowl and noise. Alright, so we have our nice skin on clean mallard breast. Uh, I've let this come to room temperature so now it's ready to be seasoned. The first thing I'm going to do though is we want to score the skin and that's going to allow the fat to render out a little quicker, a little more evenly and that's going to get the skin nice and crispy so what you're doing is basically just kind of like cutting a little diagonal pattern uh, maybe half an inch apart or so and you're going to make like little squares so you want to cut through the fat but not into the meat so should not be slicing into the meat. You should just kind of barely be opening up that skin. 
you do go into the meat a little bit, it's not a big deal. You just prefer not to be hacking into the meat. So we've got a row that way. And then we just want to make us another little line this way. Okay. That's pretty good right there. That'll work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go salt. Uh, pretty good. Flip her over. So the underside pretty good. And we're going to let this sit with the salt on it for about half an hour. So I'll get my potatoes started while they're going. This can sit with the salt on it just so the Seasoning can adhere to the meat and we're not going to do the pepper uh, right away We're going to do that after it comes out of the pan because I don't want the pepper to burn You kind of defeat the purpose of seasoning it in which if you're burning your spice on there, so salt first Pepper after So here's a little better look at that. I know that camera angle wasn't the best, but you can see kind of how it's Just kind of scored down to the meat, not through the meat, so that's what it should look like, roughly. It's not the greatest, but it's good enough. Okay, so one thing I did forget to mention, this duck breast was not brined at all. It was not soaked in water, salt water, milk, anything like that. I don't brine my puddle duck breasts. I, I think you're kind of removing flavor. You're trying to remove, you know, you think you're removing gamey flavor, but if you cook it right, there's there's not gamey flavor. As long as you take care of the meat and you prepare it correctly, you're not going to have that flavor. Now, I will brine swan, I'll brine goose breasts, I'll brine, you know, diver sea ducks. Something that's a little stronger flavor, something you're probably not going to cook like a steak out of, but the puddled up breasts, uh, I will leave unbrined. Okay, so I'm gonna get the potato started. I've got a pot right here. I'm just gonna put in my potatoes. Then I've got three cloves of garlic uh, with the skin off and then the little woody base part where it connects to the rest of the bulb. I cut that off too, because it bothers me. So we're gonna throw those in there. And those are going to boil down and cook and it's going to tame down that garlic flavor like the hotness of the garlic but um it'll cook down and it'll mash right into the potato it'll incorporate well and that to me is a whole lot better in a mashed potato than garlic powder it, it's just just a little bit better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put enough water in the pot to just cover the potatoes i'm going to salt the water and we're going to get these started. Okay, so you see how much, about how much water I've got in there. It's just a little bit over the top of the potatoes. So I'm going to throw a pretty decent amount of kosher salt in here. You put a little more in there than you think because a lot of that salt is going to stay in the water when you drain them. So we're just want to put enough in there to kind of season our potatoes and then we'll add a little more after uh, just to taste if it needs any after they're cooked and mashed. So we're going to go ahead and get this up to a boil. Uh, this amount of potatoes, uh, anywhere from probably 15 to 20 minutes maybe. It shouldn't take very long. And uh, just when you stick a fork in them and they're good and soft, you don't feel any you know, like crunch in the center good to go so just in case I've just thought about this uh, if any of you sad SOBs don't know how to boil water you put the pot on the burner you turn the burner on high and you wait so while my potatoes are coming to a boil and my duck breast is over there hanging out I want to talk a little bit about this uh, cooking method this is a cold pan sear so what you do you start off with a little bit of olive oil in the pan, cold pan, no heat to it. You put the duck breast skin side down, you turn on the heat to medium high, 
and from there that slow like gradual uh, increase of heat allows the fat under the skin in between the skin and the meat to render out uh, without the skin getting burned or without the breast itself cooking too quickly and I think this to me is the best way to cook a skin on duck breast now if you don't have the skin on it you can just cook it like you would anything else you know you throw canola or olive oil whatever in there on medium medium high heat and you know throw it right into a hot pan but the cold pan method really allows you to um, get that fat rendered out get the skin crispy uh, without overcooking the duck breast because you definitely don't want to do that if you overcook a duck breast you may as well have just thrown it in the jerky pile because it's not good so let's just talk about this little little dish here for a minute while my potatoes are cooking down we've been hunting all season you know your old lady's probably pissed you got a lot of making up to do but you know what are you going to do to you know really treat her well what you're going to do is you're going to not make those rubbery ass uh, duck poppers that you've been making all season you're going to make her this nice crispy perfectly cooked duck breast with these just incredible mashed potatoes with the garlic and the parmesan and the black pepper listen it's not going to undo all the damage you've done in the last four months but it might help not going to hurt so just think about it I'll tell you what I don't know about you folks but I'm getting fat you know you've been eating garbage for months now every weekend just living off of sun drops and candy bars and gas station cheeseburgers just trash so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw some some good ones at you here uh, in the next few weeks or so don't take my word on that that uh maybe a, maybe a little less less trash for your body you know i mean this this doesn't happen by accident this is just neglect and I know, I've seen some of y'all y'all getting fat too you need to, need to stop sucking down everything in sight okay maybe lay off the bush, bush lights a little bit another thing to think about just getting the wheels turning a little bit here also if you're like really OCD you might have noticed that there's no doors on the cabinets there's dishes here there's dishes in the sink the label on my hat is not exactly straight and first of all you're right. Second of all, remember that it is, it is absolutely free to mind your own business. All right, I think we're done here, so I'm just gonna get a potato out, show you about what we're looking for. So, you can smash it with a fork like that. Good to go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to drain the potatoes, throw a lid on the pot, and then I'm going to assemble said potatoes after the duck breast is cooked and it's resting. All right, boys and girls, time for the, the main event here. So I've got my cast iron skillet here. No heat to it yet, obviously, because I just put my hand in it. So what we're going to do is take, this is the olive oil I buy. You can also use like a neutral oil, like canola or vegetable, or something like that, if you don't want to worry about it burning. But I like a little olive oil in there just for the flavor. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that. Give her one of those. Move it around with your hand a little bit. Get in there, get dirty. That work. So. Like I said, duck breast, ready to go. Cold pan, skin down, medium high. So while this is starting to heat up here, I'm gonna talk about how you wanna cook this. If you can at all, I would go as rare as you can eat it. 
Uh, I mean, you don't have to make it purple, like bleeding or anything, but I would highly recommend going um, at least medium rare, if not rare. You really don't want to overcook a duck breast. Um, a lot of it is going to come with just practice. You know, you may have messed one or two up, but I would lean on the side of undercooked. Um, it is going to cook a little more with the heat carryover when it rests on the cutting board, which you should be doing with any whole muscle meat that you cook. If you press on it after we flip it over and cook it on the other side and it feels like a 12 ply mud tire, uh, you've just created dog food and you don't want that. So, okay, so you can hear the pan start to sizzle a little bit now. And uh, once it gets to this point, what I would do, because if you've ever cooked bur uh, duck breast, you know this, it likes to kind of like cup up on one side like a salsa bologna. So you can take your, your fingers like this and just press it down in the middle while this pan's coming to temperature. Always keep a clean hand for your crispies. I'm just gonna kinda hold it here and until the that side starts cooking just so that the center stays in contact with the skillet. Okay, so our skin's good and crispy. And flip her over. And at this point, you can either cook it just like this, or you can butter baste it. So when you butter baste it, you're gonna take just a, you always hear people say a knob of butter, which is just a really arbitrary amount of butter. Throw that in there. Maybe turn your pan down just a little bit. Take dark cloves, skin on. And while that underside is cooking, you're going to take this hot brown butter and you're just going to spoon it over the top. So what this is going to do is, uh, one, this butter and brown butter is incredible tasting. But it's also good, it's gonna help get the top part of the skin even more crispy, get a little more browning on the top. And uh, the whole garlic cloves in there are gonna kind of perfume that butter and just add even more flavor. So right now, you can see kind of where we're at. Still, still about rare, but you really gotta keep an eye on it and check it because this is going to be done here pretty quickly. So this right here, you're probably not going to be able to tell this, but that should be about rare, medium rare. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this out of the pan. I'm going to put these garlic cloves on top just so any juices on them can drain off. And I'm going to stick this onto a clean cutting board for this. Okay, so while that uh, duck breast is resting, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start getting my mashed potatoes together. So first step is going to be to go ahead and start getting these mashed. Once you get those started, we can go ahead and we'll add a little bit of our half and half. Now you can use regular milk, you can use heavy cream, but I'm going to use half and half today. So we're just going to add this a little bit at a time, and we're just going to like eyeball this whole deal. So a little bit of half and half. You can make these as loose or as thick smooth or as chunky as you would like. I like a really smooth mashed potato. So I'm probably gonna add a little more, more wet ingredient than maybe some people. Uh, actually, when you make this, don't put your cold stuff in first. Go ahead and throw in a good amount of butter while everything's still hot, so. A lot of butter. Go ahead and mash that in there. If you can Remember to set some out and have it room temperature 
That'll be even better just because it's going to melt quicker. So this is starting to get nice and smooth, and while it's still good and hot, what I'm going to do is get some Parmigiano Reggiano. And while this is like, you know, four times the price, it lasts quite a good while and it packs a lot more punch flavor wise than normal pre grated store bought Parmesan. I'm going to add in pretty good amount of this stuff using a microplane you can get these on amazon for like ten dollars and i would highly suggest getting one of these they're super sharp they're great stuff super fine you can use it for this which is like what i use it for a lot it's really good for zest and citrus that's probably good let's start with that let's get the parmesan mixed in and that parmesan uh will thicken up the potatoes so, if they look a little loose at first, I wouldn't be alarmed. Okay, so we're going to add in a little black pepper. Fresh, cracked black pepper would be better. I don't have any, so I'm using regular black pepper. Put in as little or as much as you'd like. So at this point, yeah, it looks a little thicker than I want it. I'm going to add in a little bit more half and half. That's looking a little better. And the last thing we're gonna do, so we're gonna check this for seasoning. We're gonna see if we need a little more salt. So, to me, that's about right. Uh, the seasoning in the water we did when we cooked potatoes, and the salt you get from the Parmigiano Reggiano, which is fairly salty cheese, is plenty. So we're good to go. We're gonna put the lid back on this. We're gonna slice our duck breast, see how we did, and then we're gonna plate it up. All right, so we're gonna see how good of a job we did here. So. I'm going to go ahead and slice her up. Looks like we did a pretty decent job. She's about, oh, about medium rare. Okay, so last thing we're going to do, got our duck breast sliced up nice. We're going to go ahead and throw on a little more pepper again. If you have fresh cracked black pepper, that's what you want to do. But there you go pepper at the end and we're gonna go ahead and plate this bad boy up all right so here's what we end up with our nice medium rare duck breast this is about as far as you want to go with it uh, it's still very tender very juicy but anywhere past this where you start getting you know gray on down into the slice of meat it's no go but perfect cooked duck breast crispy skin nice rendered out fat delicious as good as anything that you can go out in the woods and get yourself nice garlicky buttery parmesan mashed potatoes get yourself your favorite beer have a meal there you go better than any duck popper you'll ever make so here we have it pan seared duck breast garlic parmesan mashed potatoes uh if you want you know maybe have a little little mixed green salad while some of it vinaigrette, if you're into that kind of thing. Otherwise, just chow down on meat potatoes. So, I mean, just get you a couple slices, drag it through those taters. I mean, come on. You know this can't be bad. There's no way this is going to suck. So, cook the duck, duck brush right, give it the attention it deserves, focus on your field care so you don't have feathery, bloody duck breasts. Simple. Literally, this is less steps than what you could put into a duck popper, and it's exponentially better. So, if you're still with us here, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe, like video, or don't. I enjoy making this one. Simple, very basic dish. Very classic, very delicious very delicious so once again thanks for watching hope you guys had a good duck season hope your old lady is not too mad fix her this cheer her up you know give her some wine something fire some chocolates whatever your old lady likes and y'all have a good one